So there's always been varying degrees of people who are extremely committed to a faith versus people who are just tend to be more skeptical, regardless of the state of scientific knowledge. And, and this gets to, you know, what some people have argued is like the extreme male brain idea. And, you know, is it these... related to interest in people and interest in things? Correct. Right? Oh, good. That, oh, I yeah. always wondered about that. Yeah. And so the people so, who are interested in things are much less likely to be religious believers, I would presume. Correct. Correct. So there is an argument that some people have made that um, that so that religion is very much relies on social cognition, right? Or relies on the same neural processes um, involved in thinking about people, like like you just said. Because to to spirituality, you have to animate the world with minds in a way, right? You have to anthropomorphize. You have to. So you could have a. In, in fact, in, in some in some cultural traditions that, you know, we have our big five personality model, of course, but in some cultural traditions, they have a, a spirituality dimension of personality. Uh, you know, it, it's recognized that people just naturally vary. In the West, we tend to be a little bit more blank slatist <laughs> about, about religion. Uh, people tend to think, well, you just decide to be religious or you were right, raised that it's religious. It's just a matter of cold cognitive belief rather than right? a temperamental um, proclivity. Right. So, um, but, you know, but at the same time, we, we say things like people have a calling or, and, and maybe secular people don't say that, but they, they um, but people kind of recognize that there's individual differences in what, in what people, some people are good artists, right? Some people are just more artistic. Um, some people just, so some people are just more likely to see the world as, as a little bit enchanted, whereas others are, are just more naturally skeptical. And so um, so let's just assume for a second that that's true, that there's this individual difference that's always existed where you've had some people that are just more interested in things, like you said. And so they might even be somewhat, at the extreme, they might even be somewhat mind blind. They, religion might not, right. even, they might not even totally understand it because they can't really tangibly grasp it. Um, whereas other people are, you know, they they can see the world is more magical. Um, and even so, if that's always existed, then what you what you might find is in the past when we had a less individualistic culture, everyone went to church not because everyone necessarily believed at the same level of commitment, but people didn't have this attitude of well, I'm not going to go because I don't believe. People had more of a well, I this is the thing that we do. <laughs> well, it was also the case, I think, to some degree that you know part of the reason that we don't believe now is because we have a variety of things we could believe in. And right. the farther back you go in history, I mean, imagine a medieval town where Christianity dominated. There might have been some Jews there who would posit an alternative faith, let's say, but Christianity wasn't so much an explanation of the world as it was the explanation of the right. world. So, I mean, maybe you were a brilliant iconoclast and, and you doubted certain things, but you didn't have an alternative schema of right. representation at hand like you do now. So, right. Yeah, it was the only game in town. So, so yeah, so I, I do think that's part of it. But, but maybe there is a benefit, even though we have m more things you can believe, of course, you know, it, people act like it's weird if you say something to them like, well, maybe it's good from time to time to submit to things that aren't you know, 100% in, in alignment with what you want to do and what you believe, right? Maybe there are, you know, maybe there are benefits to being part of a community project. And there's a recognition that it's full of people with individual differences, that there are going to be people that are devout believers. And then there are, you know, going to be people that are more skeptical, but there's something, there's a place for everybody in this, in this community. I mean, we do this with, with other things like, like sports, I mean, some people just mm -hmm. aren't good athletes, no matter how hard they try. But at least in American culture, and I assume it's the same and, and similar in Canada, we think that kids should have a go at it. And we think that it's okay if you're, if you're not naturally gifted, it's good for you. There's benefits from participating in physical activities, and it's fun, and it's a way to have teammates and to connect with people and to maybe learn leadership skills or learn what it's like, how to win and how to lose. And, and, and you learn all these life skills. And it's fine that some people 
aren't that, you know, just aren't that good at it or kind of clumsy or whatever. And so I'm, I'm not trying to say that religion and sports are <laughs> by any means the same thing. But in other, the point is in other domains, we recognize that there are individual differences and that doesn't preclude them from participating in, in the project um, and that there might be benefits for having a more, I mean, I know this is a, a loaded term now in academia, but in, inclusivity, but there might be benefits for being inclusive in saying that, um, that you know, there's a place in religion, even for people who are more uh, skeptical. And I do think that might be the case. I, I'm not 100% sure, but I do think that that might be the case outside of outside of the Western world. Again, I think in the more individualistic cultures, we're more apt to say, well, what do you believe? What do you think as an individual? What do you want to do? Um, as opposed to what is your duty to do? Or what yeah, is- And um, what's your relationship to the collective? Correct. Well, you could also imagine that it might be a it might be something like a difference in fundamental cognitive metaphors as well, and those could be different niches. So imagine mm -hmm. that the so just for the benefit of the audience, the biggest difference known between men and women in terms of individual differences is interest in people versus interest in things. And men are more interested in things and women more interested in people. On average, the difference is about one standard deviation, which is very large by the standards of such things. And so you could imagine that maybe it's more uh, acceptable, more understandable for people who are primarily interested in things to view the world mechanistically. Whereas, so that's a metaphor, the world is a machine. And there's a kind of determinism that goes along with that, but also a, a logical analyzability and a, and, and, a, and a reductionism and a decomposition that would all go along with tool formation, let's say. Whereas you could also visualize being as a spirit. And that also makes sense because the community, in some sense, is a spirit, and other people are spirits, and so and animals are spirits. They have they're they're personality like, and so to view existence itself as characterized by personality would be a different approach, but one that would have its benefits and 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 detractions, just as viewing it like a machine might. Right. You know, I'm yeah. I'm often struck by the fact that you know it, it seems to me that engineers engineer types are more likely to be critical of mythology and narrative, religious in nature, particularly because it, it, it doesn't align with their mode of thinking, but they tend to pick up their mythology in, in, in the form of, say, science fiction. It, it comes in a more implicit level. Right. You're actually getting to, um, <laughs> to a series of studies that, that we did looking, looking at, at this. So there was a, there were some surveys that came out a number of years ago that found that um, the more secular people were, the more likely they were to believe in UFOs. And when I no, say that's UFOs, perfect, that goes along with <laughs> Jung's analysis of, of visions of UFOs in the sky, right. right? He thought those were those were replacements for religious revelations, the angels yeah. essentially descending from on high. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Michael Shermer and I talked about this because he he you know he's written about this before that he's got a great quote that um, UFOs are like. DDs for atheists, or, or I, I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it, it was something something to that effect. But what we so there there's these surveys that find that the more secular people are, the more likely they are to believe in UFOs, and not just UFOs in the sense that well we don't know what these things are, but they're they're, they're likely to believe that there's intelligent alien life among us. Um, so they're really taking a leap of faith. So, so that those surveys existed, but what we were interested in in our lab was, well, to what if religion um, is about meaning, which there's a lot of you know studies looking at the the existential benefits of religion, including meaning making. We're like, well, if a religion's about meaning, um, and people who aren't religious might be, so they might be more vulnerable to not having meaning, and thus more likely to be searching for meaning. Would they be more likely, would that explain why they're more likely to believe in UFOs? So in, in other words, from, from like a methodological point of view, what we did is we took we looked at this correlation between lack of belief in um, religion and a positive belief in, in, in aliens to see if it was mediated, see if that relationship was mediated by these, these meaning-making um, variables. 
And so there, th there's these uh, measures that maybe you're familiar with called um, the presence of meaning, which measures to what extent you actually see your life as meaningful. And then there's another measure called the search for meaning, which is basically to what extent you're currently looking for, for meaning in life. They tend to be negatively correlated, not always, but it, it makes sense that they are because the more you feel like your life is full of meaning, the less in need you are to go look for new meaning. And so what we found was, what's um, we found a support for a mediation model in which the less people believed in God, um, the less meaning they reported having, the more, the higher they were in search for meaning, which in turn predicted their belief in aliens and UFOs. So